So as we as we see, Mrs. Molly Paul, who is the principal of Bombay Scottish School, is here to remind us about the bread and butter of our life, academics, and how much importance should you give it? Mrs. Molly Paul has an MA in education from the University of Mumbai in 2011. She is also, as we already know, the principal of Bombay Scottish School at Mahim. Education, as you know, sets the starting base of our life for us to shoot and reach out from. The Ministry of Human Resources in India has constantly been keeping a close eye on the literacy over the years. In 2016, the adult literacy rate showed an upward trend for the citizens of India. Additionally, the increase in adult literacy rate was higher among females than males, and the gender gap was also narrowing down. In 2018, World Education News stated more than 27% of the country's youth are excluded from education, employment, or training, while the overwhelming majority of working Indians are employed in the informal sector, many of them in agriculture, often in precarious engagements, lacking any form of job security or labor protection. Therefore, children, you are fortunate enough to attend the school should you know its true value and the importance. So please bring your hands together to welcome Mrs. Molly Paul. Can you all hear me? I think even without that mic. Are the children feeling cold? Yeah, can we do something about the AC? Because if they're going to be shivering, then I don't think what I'm saying is going to have any impact. Because I'm not going to talk about your favorite topic, right? In fact, I'm going to be talking about your not so favorite topic. What is that? <laughs> Academics. Academics or studies. There are very, very few children who enjoy study. You agree with me? But do you have a choice? You have no choice. So then what's the wise thing to do? Enjoy it. Do it. Give it your best shot. Don't equate your effort with marks. Sometimes we look at academics as only marks. It's not so, children. Which classes are these from? All from 8th standard. So they're gearing up for their big exam in standard 10. Correct? You have still a long way to go. Enjoy standard eight. And that's another important point that I think as adults around them need to emphasize. To be mindful of where you are and what you are doing. Mindfulness. Practice mindfulness. Today you are sitting in this auditorium, having been forced by your school and your teachers to come and listen to these people talking. Well, you didn't have a choice. So now let's sit here mindfully listen to the speakers. Some of it will make sense, some of it may not. But let's take what we can from it. Are we agreed on that? Yes or no? Okay. So, why do we go to school children? Why do we need an education? Anybody can answer? Why do we need to... Uh, any, any answer? Why do we need? For the four? For, to gain knowledge. Oh. Very altruistic, very good to gain knowledge. Can you gain knowledge only by going to school? Where else do you get knowledge from? Around you. In fact, they say if you don't learn something new, that day is wasted. It could be a word, it could be an idea that you have learnt, you have picked up. But if you have not learned something new, that day is wasted. So knowledge can be picked up from all around us. Then why do we have this curriculum and this 10 plus 2 plus 3 system? To help us all to become fruitful citizens. We don't want to be a parasite on society. You know what a parasite does? Like a mosquito. What does a mosquito do to us? It sits on our body. It sucks blood. It becomes stronger and the host becomes weaker. That's a parasite. So we don't want youngsters to grow up to become parasites who are going to take and not give back. So the purpose of education is this. How we go about doing it is up to the schools to ensure that children are all equipped to deal uh, with the world that you are not even aware of. You are going to grow up into a world that doesn't exist today. 
it's a new world and you've heard of this term called vuca v u c a anyone knows the full form a, a vuca world v stands for volatile it's changing constantly you cannot even imagine that i have come from a time when there was no electricity in my hometown today 3 years ago we took our students on a picnic to satal you have heard of sat nainital there is a place called satal and there is to get to this campsite we have to take a boat a paddle boat no doubt so all the children had to work hard with the paddle to reach the campsite when we reach there we are told there is no electricity children collapse there only really. <laughs> then we are not living in rooms we are living in tents and what is all around us a forest so now to keep them inside we have to tell them please don't go wandering around because what are you likely to encounter some wild animals so we to keep them inside now if you want to go to the loo you want to go to know where the, everything is there are lanterns that were put there but they learnt we was we spent three nights there and it was such a relief i think children subconsciously were were relieved not to have any, any electricity so there's no television no network one child had a meltdown he started crying i want my mamma he said we said wait we, we cannot call your mother here we are cut off from everyone once we reach uh, jim corbett we'll call your mother sobbing 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 but somehow he managed to we managed to console him when we got to jim corbett you know the first reaction electricity <laughs> like they discovered something new so what did those children learn in those 3 days on the campsite they learned to adapt and that's what we children you children need to know how to be creative now they don't have their cell phones to sit and play games they had to interact with one another there's nothing online for them to play so they came up with games creativity another skill that you children are losing out on be creative and how can teachers we help uh, how can we help them foster that by making our classes cre creative coming up with lesson plans where the child's creativity is aroused i want to do something like for a geography class here i i teach geography in my school i was teaching sugar cane first of all agriculture is a top topic nobody wants to learn and i'm i'm doing uh, all the crops that because for this generation every everything that we eat comes in a plastic bag but it's not so it go it grows in a field there so i had to teach them this i wrote down the entire chapter in point form then i cut strips and i made four packets because i had four groups to deal with four rows of children and i called all of them we sat in the basketball court gave them a piece of chart paper and i gave these four a package to them and i say you decide the plan for this chapter on sugar cane you should have seen my class so engaged all seven or eight of them in each group sitting there un they unfolded their uh, piece of paper and they had to put it down in order till today i ask, i ask them any question on uh, sugar cane they know the answer so that's what we teachers need to devise to be creative so that our children then become creative life beyond academics how much importance should you give to academics you'll have not missed much just listen to miss which Paul. class which class are you all from a so the whole school uh, okay which school yes. is this a so proudly they're saying it that's how you should be proud of your school are you yes and this is a wonderful initiative bringing you here were you all, were you all amazed by what you all saw yes. no so i'm looking a little doubtful here acha nahi laga jo aapne dekha you all enjoyed it no yes. would you make another visit yes but the school cannot do it okay so trouble your parents tell them we want to go once more and visit the nehru science center i saw it just once and i said wow to have such a place in our city is amazing and for us teachers it's a big blessing because here we can We we see so many examples of what we are trying to teach you through our textbooks. Although now with smart classes coming in, our work has become that much easier. Imagine a time when we didn't have anything to show you; you just had to sit there and listen while the teacher delivered. But the times have changed, and y'all are benefiting from that. But that doesn't mean that you stop thinking, you stop being creative, and not just with your excuses. You got to be creative when you are solving a problem. because you need to have that skill of being able to solve problems and that's why academics can never take a back seat 
I read somewhere that academics is being compared to the foundation of a building or a bridge. If that foundation is weak, what will happen to that building or bridge? It will collapse. Very true. Similarly, if you have a sound academic background, your chances of a bright future will be that much brighter. You agree with that much? Yes. Definitely. Now, it doesn't mean you have to stand first in class. Not at all. The scientists, the industrialists, the entrepreneurs that we have in the city are not all from elite schools and not all first rankers either. In fact, yesterday I googled one point. Um, 10 people who have not attended school, no, had, have not had successful people who have not had formal education. And I was surprised by the names that drew up. All of them familiar to us. I will just name a few. They started with Rabindranath Tagore. He hated formal education. And you have heard of Shanti Niketan and how education is imparted there. And we teachers are trying in our own way to bring that kind of a learning experience into our classrooms as well. Where the children want to learn. We want an engaged class in our midst. Another one, the first president of the United States, George Washington, didn't have formal education. Dhirubhai Ambani. But what did they possess then that no books will tell you about? They possessed aspiration. Now, what is an aspiration? A desire, a hope, a goal. I want to be something. I want to achieve something. Thomas Alva Edison also was one of those names that came up, who invented the light bulb. So did Henry Ford's name come up. What is Henry Ford known for? Cars. You all know only the later ones, no? Well, he uh, is known for uh, having invented the first car. No, none of these people had uh, formal education. Primary school education and that was it. But they all went on to achieve success because they had the aspiration, the desire, the goal that they've set for themselves. They had the patience. You children don't give up easily. Persevere. Do your little bit to make sure that your graph moves in the right direction. If term one academics, you've not done so well, make sure that in the next test, you've done two marks better. You've got two marks better. It should not be two marks less. That's all we teachers and parents want from you. To see the effort that you put in. Because your effort, your input is equal to output. You are not going to be successful if your input is not going to be up there. So put in effort and you will see the results. And if you are happy with your input, your teachers are happy with your input, your parents are happy, don't worry about the result, the marks. I assure you, your teacher sitting here will also tell. Can do better. When we write that can do better, what does it mean? That we know this child, when he or she puts in that little more effort, will be more successful. And not more marks. Here you will be able to cope. So these successful people had a vision, the aspiration, the desire. They had patience. They were lifelong learners. Don't give up. I know this much, that's the end of it. We don't learn just to write a paper. We build on that knowledge. What can I do differently? So problem is, even our question papers, our teachers will bear with me here. We, we ask open-ended questions. And why do we do that? Because there is no wrong answer. If you are able to give your, a reasoning for your answer, we will accept it. But for that, you have to be creative as well. So if you have these qualities and above all, self-discipline. Self-discipline. Don't have others sitting on your head, your parents telling you, stop, put up the TV and sit with your books. You know your responsibilities. I have this much of homework to be done. You don't want to be pulled up next day by the teacher. So then set yourself that timetable. So your goal for that day is completing my timetable. Persevere. You may fail. Some, some, some answers may be beyond you. But have the patience. It's okay to make mistakes. No one said you have to be perfect. It's a wrong concept. But we are all striving to, striving to do our best. And that's what you children need to promise yourselves. That you will do your best at all times. At the moment it is being a student. Give it your best shot at 8th standard. Don't worry about 9th and 10th. 
that will take care of itself. If in the eighth standard, you've got all these subjects that you got to do, find somewhere the interest that you have. There's no choice, so let me at least enjoy. You know, that's another thing that you need to understand early enough, that all of us cannot do what we enjoy, but we can certainly enjoy what we do. Yes or no? We cannot choose. Now you have no choice that you have to go to school. But can you enjoy, choose to enjoy what you are doing? Yes, you can. And when I say enjoy children, it is not again about marks. Please don't equate academics with marks. And teachers also, we must be telling this in the class. We just need to see the effort that you put in. And we need to applaud you, we will applaud you for the effort that you put in. Now, so why was all of this, why we say academics is important, I said, it's the foundation. And if you have a strong academic foundation, your chances at being success, uh, successful later on in life will be that much brighter. Now, how much you have to study, uh, what you need to uh, complete in order to reach your goal, it's up to each one of you to set that. No one else can set it up for you. Well, the reason why we need to study, I was saying, is because we need to ensure that we have a good shot at making a successful life for ourselves. That's what studies is all about. We learn different skills. See, today you learned, you all came in a group. You all were made to stand in a line, come in and take your places. Your teacher had to guide you, first fill up the first seats and then the second and so on. When you do this several times, you pick up a life skill of how it is. If I put a problem now to you, it will take a little time for you to understand, but you will each one have an idea. Don't allow that idea to fade away. That is important. I read yesterday, uh, a question was asked to an audience about which is the wealthiest place on earth? And the different answers, you know, sabse Amir Jaga ko concept. What is it? And somebody said, uh, uh, Gulf countries. Why? Because they've got lots of oil. Somebody said South Africa because of the diamonds that are there. And he said, none of these answers. And the shocking answer was, it is the graveyard. It's the graveyard. Why? He said, there are so many people lying there who have gone, who have died without having their ideas explored or explained. We don't know. We all think that we have a chance tomorrow. There is no assurance that all of us will live to see tomorrow. It's all in God's hand. So what do we have today? Today, if I have an idea, I must share it. If a problem is thrown at me in the class, I must put up my hand and share this. If I'm asked to write an essay or composition, let me put down my thoughts here. Because you're allowed to dream, children. You should dream. You are our future. So unless you come up with ideas, well, the world is going to look very, very grim. Because only two things we can say it's mine. My body and my earth. You don't say your earth. It's mine. It's, it belongs to each one of us. And both these, it's up to each one of us to take care of. I have to take care of my body, nobody else will. And I have to do my part to ensure that this earth remains a good place. And that's what academics helps us also. Those subjects when you learn, you learn how, it, how important it is that we should not cut down trees. What is the role that trees play? We all know it. But do we stand silently or do we move ahead and take action to stop trees from being felled. If you do nothing else that you plan in your life that will outlive you, you've done your bit to reduce your carbon footprint. That is what academics is all about. So you will learn this through your textbooks. And as you learn, because you're learning together, you will learn the four C's that are necessary for uh, living in the future. And those four C's, anybody can guess? One is to be creative. What is the meaning of creative? When the teacher asks, why are you late in the class? Then what do you tell? They give very creative answers. That when I was going from here, I was coming from there, it happened, it happened, it happened. That creativity is not. Only that creativity is not. But we look at something with different eyes. There will be people who will not agree with you. It's okay. But you need to voice that. You got to be creative. You got to be critical thinkers. Thinking out of the box. 
It's very, very important, children. Today, the, the problems that you're going to face will require you to be critical thinkers. And then you cannot work alone. You'll work best when we give you project work. Does your school teachers, you'll do project work with the children? They, they work in a group. Jab group mein aap log kaam karte ho, achha lagta hai na? Because some child is good at writing, another child is good at researching, another child is good at putting it all together. And then finally, you're so proud when you present your project. And you're waiting to see whose will be the best. So collaboration. It's very, very important that we learn to work with one another. And when you collaborate, there will be differences. How you resolve those differences also, you will learn as you grow through your school days, through your college days. But remember always your common sense. Don't give that common sense a holiday. Apply that always. If I were to bring a small child into this room, a baby, crawling baby, it's not afraid. It will walk, crawl around all over the place because it is unafraid, it's confident. Its mother is behind, the mother will take care. It is curious. Where has curiosity gone today? Be curious children, find out why. In your questions, trouble your teachers with these why questions. And don't be satisfied until you get a proper answer or if the teacher says, let's all discuss this tomorrow, let's Google, ask Google Baba and come back with an answer. But we should be curious. We must find out. More and more we are reading in the newspaper about young children today coming up with solutions to problems that have existed. You have a water crisis in a village, children will come up with water purification ideas. Simple, workable options. So you have a lot going up there. Don't allow society or anybody else to tell you that you're not good enough. Each one unique. Know yourself. If you're asked to describe who are you, you should be able to describe yourself not by your height and weight and um, uh, whatever the physical attributes, but I'm someone who likes this whatever, whatever. I'm someone who enjoys, I'm someone who finds some these things difficult. So like I said, you're going to find people who don't agree with you. But you will come up with ways in which to understand that point of view or get them to understand your point of view. So communication was the fourth C. How you communicate your ideas. I hope I've made myself clear. You have any questions? Anybody? You've got a great speaker following me. Welcome, Dr. Chavda. Yeah. Children, puchhi hai aap log. Abhi wapas school ja rahe ho ki ghar? Unko pata nahi hai? Kaan jayenge? Ha? School jayenge? Achcha. Kyu nahi bolna hai? Itna serious bhi nahi bhatna hai. Mokha milta hai to bolna chahiye aap loong ko. Kya samaj mein aai jo meri baaton se? Kuch kuch to samaj mein aai? आप लोग कुछ अलग करोगे? नहीं। I don't think they are क्लास में नहीं बोलने देते? नहीं बोलने देते। बहुत स्ट्रिक्ट हैं आप लोग? नहीं नहीं स्ट्रिक्ट नहीं हैं। हाँ। लेकिन मराठी कुछ मराठी मीडियम के। अच्छा अच्छा अच्छा। सेमी के। अच्छा 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 अच्छा। कोई बात नहीं कोई बात नहीं। Language should never be a barrier, children. Language should never be a barrier. Stand up and talk in Marathi. Marathi में तो बोलना तरी चाल Tell us something about yourself. Let me understand. What? Tell me about yourself. If I ask you to describe, हाँ? हमें हमारी लाइफ में ऐसा काम करना चाहिए जिससे हमारी और हमारी जो धरती है उसका फायदा हो सके और हमें ऐसे मतलब चीजें बनानी चाहिए जिससे लोगों को आराम मिल सके और हमारी जो अर्थ है वो मतलब पोल्यूशन से दूर होकर एक अच्छी अर्थ बन सके। क्या करोगे आप उसके लिए? एक चीज़ बढ़ेंगे और अच्छे से मतलब अलग-अलग टाइप के प्रोजेक्ट्स करेंगे जिसकी वजह से हमारे आर्थ ग्रीन रहे और अच्छे से मतलब हम उसके ऊपर रह सके क्या बात है तालियां दीजिए इनको बढ़िया टाइम नाउ इतना सोचना चाहिए बस नाउ नाउ संगा नाउ माय नेम इस साहिल संदीप शेलर ओके साहिल साथी साहिल साथी साहिल डोंट � it's okay. Teachers, any qu queries here? Ma'am, you had a mocha thing. 
that VUCA. What is VUCA? You Google it, you will know. So V stands for volatile. Huh? Uh, U stands for uncertain. It's so uncertain. C is complex. And A, ambiguous. That's the world that our children are growing up in. So we need to prepare them for that. And it's a big responsibility on all of us teachers. Don't go there and try and, uh, you know, like they say, cover the syllabus. We have to uncover it for them, actually, first of all. Secondly, whether we are there in class or not, they will learn. At their fingertips, there is knowledge. Then what is our role here? Not to fill those bowls, as they say, but to ignite those minds. That they become thinking people. They don't go away without sharing their wonderful ideas. Each one year is a gem, brimming with ideas. And that's what our role as teacher should be, facilitator should be. You know, we are facilitating the whole process. And then we sit back and say, that was my student. And we can be proud of the role that we played. That's how important it is. So all the best to you children and all the best to you teachers. Yes. Don't make it too tough. Huh? <laughs> You're a parent? I'm a parent. My daughter Do you send your child? No, no. I Will you send your children. child in standard 8? Not in standard 8. I ninth? can manage till 8, maybe 9th, maths and all, if required. But I till now, I'm teaching my children myself. So if every parent took hmm. this decision, right. what is the problem then? Parents are not putting enough effort. You know what actually. I feel? I can't even blame them. And I'm not blaming school teachers either. We all do a sincere job. Hmm. But parents are working parents. So there's no one at home when that child comes home. So what do you do? You don't want them to idle. Exactly. In, those, in earlier days, my right. time and all, no problem. Yeah. We, were, we were told the our snacks and milk were lying on the table. Drink that, go out and play. Right. Nowadays, children go to play at 8 o'clock. I don't right. understand this concept. And they don't play on the playground. They play on something called the podium, podium. Which is away from Mother Earth. These children are more fortunate, I would say. That they get to play on Mother Earth. Right. Many more children are wearing specs nowadays apparently because they don't see this vision. You know, the long distance. Long. They're all in close surroundings. Yeah. So your eyes are not used to seeing distances like we, I grew up in or even your uh, childhood. Right. No, they are in the four walls of their house in front of that uh, screen. Some screen or the other. Like the time kids are spending in tuition classes, in fact, they should be spending in sports, outdoor sports or other activities. Play! Absolutely. Unsupervised. I mean, they should. so much missing in today's scenario. Absolutely. And who is to blame? Uh, Only yes, parents. Absolutely. That's the, their parents, the primary teachers. Hmm. Parents are the primary. You all agree with that? Yes, they are the absolutely. primary teachers. Absolutely. If they fail their duty, in the, I feel now the reversal of roles is happening. In school, we are teaching them about values. And parents are sending them for tuition classes. So our job is being done by those. Hmm. And we are t telling them about manners, about uh, our traditions, our customs, our values. Ro reversal is happening, which right. is so unfortunate. Because unless we teach those values in our class, what is the point of education? There is no point. So we have to persevere. Forget about what happens after 4 o'clock. We have no control over that. That's another thing, children, you all must know. Don't blame outside entities. Because you have no control. You cannot control what I'm going to say here. But you can control what you will say. Well, how you will act. So have control on that. Be careful because once the words are uttered, you can't take it back. Once you do a certain action, you can't undo that action. So think. And that's what education helps us do. When we read about you know, our literature lessons, we, we learn about the thoughts of these great writers. Why is Shakespeare still relevant today? Human nature doesn't change. There is jealousy. There is ambition. Even today. And we hear about stories. We don't learn from our mistakes. Unfortunately. We are making newer ones. I think we are getting a doctorate in that probably. So don't worry about tuitions. Because it do, don't let it ever affect your teaching. There may be two or three or four or five or maybe 75 percent. But there will be five or ten children, children who get there, yeah, for whom you are everything. Think that the whole class is like that and deliver. I am not saying anything new here. Right. We are, that's a known fact. There is no new knowledge. It's only packaged differently. Hmm. So but when you hear it, you, know, you, you begin to think, if I have moved the needle a little bit, then I have done my job. 
because I'm also learning here. Right. It's always a give and take. I know how frustrating it can be. I understand what you say. But I tell the parents, who is the one who approaches the teacher? Parents. And in fact, I was reading about IIMs and all, and they are saying that quota classes, not it's a good idea. Much. It's, it's not. Too a, much and we are reading about kids. suicides there. Still, mm -hmm. nobody wakes up to it. Mm -hmm. It's Thank a vicious you. cycle. I know. Yes. for the competitive exams because I have been through this phase. I had been preparing for JE for last two years. So that particular period was very like Tough. stressful. Yes, I was I was completely disconnected with world. And uh, so Did it help? Help in no, I actually I did not and yeah the bad part was that I did not make it to uh, to any of the IITs also. So uh, that was very stressful. So most times. most counselors will say, if you don't get that top tier, go to the second tier and the third tier. They say it's better to be a big fish in a small pond than a small fish in a big pond. So go join. They would say, I remember one counselor coming to our school and saying, Bombay Scottish students, I'll tell them to go to Kirti College. Stand first there. So you you, you become that on the top percentile. Mm -hmm. That looks good on your CV. Yeah. That's what you got to be smart about this. Coaching classes, I told you, education has become a business now. It's exactly. become a business. So yeah, we can shake our heads and our, what can we do? Still, when we enter the classroom, we have responsibility to this lot. So let not what is happening outside there ever, ever stop us from delivering to this lot what we should be delivering to ensure that these develop into all-round personalities, profitable, I mean, uh, a good upright citizens of tomorrow that is our job don't ever fail in that then we've done it so i said it's a business so they will come in fact somebody approached us also because many high schools where the junior colleges are attached they have this integrated program mm, yeah. we said no way we are not in the business of education we are not in that we are here we look at it holistically and all of us teachers of the old school will agree to that we need to develop them their head, their heart, and their hand. So they think, they can feel that compassion is missing today. I just, I was a little late today because I was uh, solving an issue there. Two children got into a fight. And for no reason, they said, actually, we are friends. But they were egged on by outsiders. I said, what have you learned so long, for so long? The senior most class in the school. Not one of you thought to step in and say, stop. And I gave them an example of an eight standard, this lot of children. There was a fight that broke out and all through the CCTV we saw this. And a fight broke out. Immediately a child who was half their size just sprang up from his seat, went running to them and said, stop and pull the fellows away. That was all they needed. And they stopped. Don't ever stand by when you know that your action can stop something bad from happening. Never. Don't ever be a coward. Be fearless. And stand up for what is right always. So th this is what we have to teach our children. Okay, see the, and Adolf Hitler also was a child at one time, no? Sitting in a class. So what kind of children? Well, the mental health, the physical health, emotional health, all of this will ensure that we bring up upright, compassionate citizens. Okay. <laughs> Those exams and all will continue. We can't stop that because demand for it. Remember, it's demand and supply. Thank you. Thank you so much. You've been a wonderful, wonderful audience. Yes. <laughs>